Welcome to this mix for National 5 Physics, the Waves and Radiation Unit, Nuclear Radiation Section, looking at equivalent dose. What do you need to know? Well, you need to know the three effects, that biology, three things that the biological effect of radiation will depend upon. You need to know that the equivalent dose takes into account the type of radiation that a person is exposed to and how to calculate the equivalent dose. You also need to have some awareness of background radiation to consider naturally occurring doses of radiation. So the biological harm from radiation, so radiation can damage living cells, it changes the DNA, so it can cause cancers, but it can be used to kill off cancerous cells as well if we don't want them. So there's three things it can depend upon. The absorbed dose, the energy divided by the mass, the type of radiation. Is it alpha? Is it beta? Is it gamma? So the different types have different penetrations, abilities, but mostly they have different amounts of ionization. So alpha is the most, beta less ionizing, gamma least. And we need to take that into account. So it matters whether you're exposed, what your dose is. If everybody had the same dose and one was from alpha and one was from gamma, the harm from alpha would be the greatest. Okay, the third thing is the organ or the type of tissue that's exposed. So it makes sense to say that it makes a difference whether it's your brain that's exposed to the radiation or your big toe. One is going to have a greater effect on the body than the other. So the equivalent dose, letter H, takes into account the type of radiation. So it's much better than the absorbed dose. The absorbed dose just takes into account the energy and the mass. This one includes the type. So H, the equivalent dose, is equal to the absorbed dose times WR, the radiation weighting factor. And the unit of equivalent dose is the sievert. Typical equivalent doses, so a chest x-ray, has 0 0.1 millisieverts. A stomach x-ray has a much higher dose. If you're in space for a month, you have 15 millisieverts. If you fly on a plane because you're exposed to more cosmic rays, your equivalent dose is just higher through your job, the same as a spine x-ray. So how much is a sievert? Well, if 100 people received a dose of one sievert, four would die. It's the kind of dose you get after a nuclear accident. So we normally work in millisieverts. Millisieverts, you might remember, means 10 to the minus three or a thousandth of a sievert. Or we work in microsieverts, which is the little micro <coughs> symbol, the mu which is 10 to the minus 6 sieverts. So 1 millisievert or 1 microsievert. Let's look at an example. 50 kilogram person is exposed to radiation with a weighting factor of 20. Calculate the absorbed dose and the equivalent dose. So the absorbed dose, D equals E over M, 0.25 joules divided by the 50 kilograms. Give us 0 0.005 grays, because grays are absorbed dose. The radiation had a weighting factor of 20, so it's our absorbed dose, 0 0.005 times 20, which gives us 0 0.1 sieverts or 100 millisieverts.
You don't need to change the millisieverts, you can just leave it at sieverts. If a person is exposed to different types of radiation, you should work out the absorbed dose and or the equivalent dose for each type and then add them up. So you would do two sets of problems. You do H equals DWR for your one set, H equals DWR for your second set, and then you would add them up. The total dose would be H due to the first type and H due to the second type, which would give you your number of milli or microsieverts that you're exposed to. One millisievert is about 100 times the radiation you experience when you go on an aircraft on holiday. If you're in the air crew, you'll fly a lot more, so you get a much higher dose of radiation. But there are regulations that take this increased exposure into account to make sure that there's no harm done. In the UK, we get about two millisieverts each year from background sources. From background radiation, naturally occurring radiation, cosmic rays, radon gas, etc. And the limit we've got is five millisieverts each year, in addition to this. So seven in total. And if you work in a job, in a nuclear plant, let's say, or nuclear weapons establishment, you're allowed to be exposed to up to additional 50 millisieverts per year. It's a background radiation. Notice the red bits on the gap. So this is Aberdeen up here, or Aberdeen area up there. And that's because of the granite. The same down the bottom here in Cornwall. The granite rocks are naturally radioactive. Background radiation is naturally occurring radiation all around us. Some of it's natural, some of it's from artificial sources. Typical things, radon from rocks and soil, fallout from weapons testing, medical uses of radiation, gamma rays from building materials, cosmic radiation from space. Also industrial use and things from food and the nuclear industry. So you should know the three factors the biological effect of radiation depends upon. Type of tissue, the absorbed dose, and the type of tissue exposed. You should know how to calculate the equivalent dose. You should be able to state some natural and man-made sources of background radiation and what background radiation is.